I wanted to get Dr. Group on about this article that people also liked when he was on two weeks ago. We had the uh, Ask Dr. Group a question on supplements, on cleaning up your body, on, 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 on detoxing, something that he harps on a lot. It's out of the Daily Mail today. Exposure to common household pesticides triples boys' risk of ADHD. Really, you mean bug poison might not be good for you? Experts warn. A pesticide found in common household products has been found to triple boys' risk of being diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Yeah, roaches run around at first when you spray them with poison, too. Scientists have warned. Symptoms of the condition, notably hyperactivity and uh, impulsive activity, have found to be associated with exposure to pyrethroid pesticides, which is one of the most common ones that comes from a flower in South Africa that they claim is pretty safe. Chrysanthemum, yeah. Look, I'm not stupid, but my dad would tell me when I was, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old or even younger, take the dogs out and give them a bath. They got fleas. And I remember I'd wash them with pyrethrin soap. And I remember getting higher than a kite. But my dad was a smart guy, but he kind of went with the system that pyrethrins are safe for humans. No, I should have been wearing gloves. And I'd get it all over me and I'd be back there. You know, in the, in, in, on the porch of the front yard, out there with the water hose, washing the dogs, scrubbing them, everything. That was one of my chores, mowing the lawn, carrying out the trash, helping him do, clean out the gutters. Now kids just watch television and dream of being in the Red Guards, but I can't wait for Red Terror to be carried out on Jones. Yeah, man. Can't wait to kill him. That might be easier than you think, actually. Then you're going to get locked up in a supermax prison. <laughs> but uh, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're talking about. And you add thousands of chemicals and the stuff that's in the clothes and everything, that's why we got a whacked out society. The elite are whacked out because they're inbred, decadent, out of their minds. History shows that happens over and over again. Uh, so Dr. Group, InfoWarsLife.com's main advisor and quality control officer, uh, Army Special Ops veteran. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of nutritionist degrees, uh, alternative medicine degrees, a chiropractor as well. I won't go over his amazing background, but he's really a smart guy. We have medical doctors that advise us as well, and my dad's a chemist and other things. He advises InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, but he's pioneered uh, a, a lot of the research uh, that's cutting edge out there today. And, uh, and of course, it's mirrored by a lot of the research of uh, Dr. Blaylock, who's, of course, a retired brain surgeon. Uh, but uh, here we are going over all this today. Dr. Group, what should we hit first? I mean, I, I know you've got an agenda of stuff you want to cover and take calls at the bottom of the hour. But when, every time you come in, you harp on what's under the kitchen cabinet uh, or what these uh, flower extracts are doing. Uh, what is your uh, overall view on this situation? Well, I've been saying for a long time, you know, addressing the root cause of disease is one thing. And really, when you look at the pharmaceutical companies, there's two branches. One branch is disease management and the other branch is mental illness creation and management. And all of the men, whether it's ADD, ADHD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, all of that's caused by too many chemicals coming in and not enough coming out. And, and folks the knew that. They used to say mad as a hatter for folks that worked around mercury. Right, right. So, again, you know, it's, it's the medical profession and the pharmaceutical companies creating illnesses and creating conditions. And they're saying it's a chemical imbalance in the brain, but it's really chemical toxicity in the brain that's why 3,000 people a month die from psychiatric medications. And that's why our children are being medicated now because it's an easy way to put people on medications for the rest of their life. They're even trying to diagnose uh, children in the womb with bipolar disease right now. They want every single person from the age of one on some medication for life. There's four-year-olds that have attempted suicide. There's five-year-olds that have actually committed suicide because of the the But that's okay because system. the federal initiative that's 10 years old is called the New Freedom Initiative, which admits its goal is to basically drug everybody. Uh, its interim goal is by 2015, I guess that's this year, to have half the kids in the country on a psychiatric drug. They haven't reached that yet, but they're working towards it. 
right? And if you leave a psychiatrist's office without a prescription, there's even a mental disorder for that where they can put on your record that you left without a prescription and you have mental illness because you left. So yes, they want to lay, it's the labeling of the new society. So in the future, they can take your rights away from you because you're mentally unstable and you have some form of mental disorder, whether it's ADD, ADHD, whether it's a phobia, biting your fingernails, eating organic food, it doesn't matter. Not you, trusting you big government. Sort of I mean, they're, they're creating scores of new mental illnesses every year. Right. Well, the DSM-5 now has over 400 mental illnesses in it, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And not only that, but the psychiatric medications, most of them contain fluoride, which calcifies the pineal gland, demotivates you. We're really what's happening is turning people into zombies and we're not creating geniuses again like we used to. Most of the world's best geniuses, Einstein, Sir Isaac Newton, all of those individuals would have been labeled with learning disabilities and put on some sort of medication. So it's the dumbing down with the inclusion of the vaccinations and all the other chemicals and toxins like what you were talking about earlier in the home and in the environment, in the schools, in the workplace that people and children are being exposed to. And the children are just a lot more sensitive to it than the adults. But we well, I remember when I would air. use pyrethrin based uh, stuff, I would get hyper. I would get sped up from it. I mean, I'm I just remember feeling weird after I would wash the dogs. And then now here it is uh, just admitted. And they said it was totally safe for humans to be around. But of course, we know that's not true. We've got more info on Fukushima coming up in the next segment. I also want to get into a biz pack review where the former psychiatric head of John Hopkins has come out and said that this whole move for men to be women and women to be men uh, is a psychiatric illness. Well, I know that they call it uh, you know, uh, disabling yourself uh, a, a, a new right to chop your arms and legs off. And they have a term for that. We're going to talk about that coming up in a moment. But how much of it is chemical manipulation? We'll talk about that with Dr. Group in the next segment. And we'll take some of your questions. If you'd like to call, the number is 800-259-9231. Ask Dr. Group, 800-259-9231. Oh, and first-time callers, I want to give them a chance today. 800-259-9231. Again, please be a first-time caller. 800 259 But look at these headlines. Ray Kurzweil, humans will be hybrids by 2030. That's global, uh, Global's, that's Google's main futurist. Daily Mail, world's first biolimb created. Dead arm brought back to life in the lab could allow amputees to grow replacement limbs. Google founder defends accident record of self-driving cars. As another one rear ends somebody. And Google, of course, is defending itself. Facebook addiction linked to depression. Reuters is reporting. Oh, yeah. Video game playing linked to lower IQ and brain damage. And here's another headline. BPA still widespread in cans. So we've had a victory in that BPA that Dr. Group's dad was involved in inventing, a famous chemist. We've had victory in getting it removed some places, and they act like they're removing it, but then they just come right back with it. So the fight is still ongoing. I just threw out a whole smattering of articles there in this short segment. Which one of those you want to tackle first, Dr. Group? Uh, well, you know, you were talking about the transgender, and uh, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a mental illness or a uh, degenerative disease, it's all caused by the accumulation of chemicals. And the whole tra transgender situation that's going on is really because we have too many chemicals that are in the water and the food, and they're getting into the system and creating excess estrogen because they're endocrine disrupting chemicals which disrupt your endocrine glands and your endocrine glands are what regulates and secretes your hormones and what that does is it decreases fertility it causes you to become sterile and these are all things like bpa dioxins bps the atrazine phthalates perchlorate fire retardants even lead mercury arsenic all of these things that we're exposed well, to well explain it to me how bpa uh, from from just the research I've looked at, this mainline science, 
makes females more female, male more feminine, causes you know, women to degenerate in their uh, breasts and other sexual tissues, makes, makes girls go into puberty earlier. Uh, so it's all feminizing. They know it's doing this. And then they argue, oh, it's a mental illness. Well, I'm not a big researcher like you are, but I've done scientific research. My dad has done research. Uh, I mean, I know that in the embryo of fish, in the embryo of uh, mammals, uh, in the embryo of amphibians, we're going to come back from break, because that's what I wanted to address this in full, that chemicals do change. And from what I've read, I mean, aren't embryos, when they're really small, more female than male, and they change into male? I mean, I'm saying that as a layman there, and that these chemicals basically do develop more feminine-type traits in brain tissue. And then I see the comments on InfoWars, no, that's not true. You're either male or female. Uh, so I think there's an argument that some of this could be natural, some of it not. But, I mean, I know that chemicals are making male fish female and, and male frogs female uh, or uh, hermaphrodites. So the, the folks that are on InfoWars commenting saying I'm wrong, aren't they wrong? I mean, I'm going to go back into the science and do a whole report on this, proving it to them. But, I mean, uh, isn't that mainline science? It is mainline science, and there's plenty of research out there to back it up. I mean, BPA is really just a xenoestrogen, and a xenoestrogen is a type of xeno hormone or artificial hormone that imitates estrogen. And, I mean, everything plastic these days is contains BPA, the inside of cans. And just because they said that BPA was taken out of bot uh, baby bottles, that's pretty much the only thing that BPA was taking out It's still out in the of. liners of the microwavable, so you just cook it into your food. Yeah, and the, what happens is the body identifies BPA as the real thing. It thinks the BPA is actually estrogen. So what you're having is hormone replacement therapy, courtesy of the government, on every single so it's person. So like it's like a man that chooses to be a woman taking it to become a tranny. Yeah, because your body behaves like it's loaded with estrogen, and that affects fertility, breast health. You can grow breasts. Does if it you're affect male. sexual persuasion? Absolutely, it does in the brain, especially for the pregnant mother. And these are all documented studies. And it, you know, I want to do this. I want to get you to town with the studies and do a whole hour special on this because I'm sick of folks saying it isn't true. We'll be back. Robert, Dave, Mike, Jim, Christian, and others. We're going to be going to your phone calls, your questions for Doctor Group here in about 10 minutes or so, but Dr. Group, pulling back, I read the news seven days a week, and I've just seen countless studies. We've covered them. I do want to do a special report. We show all these studies, but I want you to talk about it some because I've got a report here where former John Hopkins, chief of psychiatry, says being transgender is a mental disorder biologically impossible. Well, I think it's a perfect storm of things. You've got it in the education system being pushed to balkanize and, and, and change society. As societies get older and uh, more decadent, as empires get more decadent, this always happens. People just want to try different things. But the chemicals being added supercharges it. That's what they do. That's the effects it has in amphibians, fish, and other mammals. You give them estrogen, they start behaving like a female. And when I talk about this, they have mainstream media come out and say, Alex is bashing gay, saying juice boxes make little boys gay. And it also, you know, gives them prostate cancer earlier. It also makes little girls go into puberty when they're five years old. I mean, this is getting crazy. Where the average age of puberty used to be, what, 14? Now it's like 10 or 9. Children as young as 3 are going into puberty. Breast cancer skyrocketing. And so, yeah, a lot of folks want to say it is a choice completely so they can judge somebody and hate them. I'm not about that. But I am about exposing the Brave New World aspect that Aldous Huxley wrote about in 1932 with Brave New World. And he gave a speech in 1962 at Berkeley saying this was a real plan to end the sexes and make us drones. Now, whether they're going to get away with it or not remains to be seen, but we're all in a giant globalist experiment, and I am an expert on that, and I made the film Endgame exposing it. So break down the science of this and what you think is happening uh, with folks like uh, Caitlyn Jenner and 
that whole cocktail, what you think the prime driver of this agenda is? I think that the prime agenda is to alter our chemical structure in our body because you have to remember that these chemicals, these xenoestrogens and these endocrine disrupting chemicals are designed to specifically attack our endocrine system, which is our hormonal system. And it's not just BPA. Like I was saying earlier, there's so much glyphosate and so much atrazine in the water supply. It's, it's hard to avoid this stuff. I mean, a matter of fact, you can take people that have been juicing and raw vegans and do blood work on them. 90, over 90% 90 of the population has detectable, detectable levels of endocrine disrupting chemicals in their blood. All these things do is disrupt your hormones. So the end game is population control, sterility. Uh, when you don't, when you feel like a woman or feel like if you're a woman that feels like a man, you're creating depression, you're creating anxiety, you're creating more money to, to put you, or diagnose you with mental illness. You're exposed. These endocrine disrupting chemicals can have such a damaging effect at parts per billion, which means you only need tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of them. And it is cause, causing sterility, low sperm count in men, uh, infertility. It's causing a breast cancer in women, prostate cancer. So there's a lot of different things I think that we're getting into. We, we are like these chemicals are creating almost like a transgender society they're the boys that are being born. There's like seven girls being born in some countries to every one boy, because like you said earlier, if you have a lot of these chemicals, it doesn't allow you to change into a boy because we're really all made as female. And then we eventually uh, become a boy in the womb. But the restriction of this in some countries that have high levels of endocrine disrupting chemicals, you're seeing seven women being born to every one boy. Not only that, you have the accumulation of all these chemicals and toxins that are, that are coming in to the body that are mixing with these endocrine disrupting chemicals like the GMO foods, the gluten, which now has a chemical structure of opiates inside of it, which is addictive and, and bread. And, and that's why that if you look at pictures of people, black, white, I don't care, from 100 years ago, 50 years ago, they look like people. They looked good. Everybody kind of looks like mutants now, some more than others. Women don't look like women at the beach. And when you see a classical looking woman, it's like, wow, she looks like a woman. And then, so no one notices, they roll out and go, men want to be girls now and add the social structure to make it acceptable to mainline it, moving us towards a completely asexual system where we're all sterile. Now, 90 plus percent sperm drop across the Western world. Brazil and others, just decades after adopting our lifestyle, they're now seeing it. It is a plan. It is a globalist plan stated by them. Absolutely. I mean, the FDA, first of all, in 2008 said that BPA was fine and nothing's wrong with it. And then in two, and then when, when Canada yanked BPA, the baby bottles off, and then Walmart decided to yank all the baby bottles in the U.S. In 2010, the FDA then finally admitted that the National Toxology Program studies were correct and that BPA was damaging to the brain, behavior, prostate gland, fetuses, children, but they didn't do anything about it. It's just all these org government organizations that are designed to do something and protect us, like the EPA, the Atomic Energy Commission, the USDA, the TSA, I mean, all these generic organizations that are out there are not doing anything to protect us, but they're just attacking the natural people and the people that are trying to rally and through activism shut these companies down that are damaging not only the people, but also damaging the planet, like you said. We're not the only ones affected by this. All the animals are starting to become affected. The bees, the that's the whole ecosystem that we live you, in. You can search that in the Mississippi River and out in the Gulf, upwards of half the fish in some of the trawls they do uh, have both sexual organs or are sterile uh, or have sexual organs growing on the sides of their bodies. I mean, they are so mutated because when they're embryos, we know fish and amphibian embryos 
are even more easily affected because they're in the water itself, not inside their mother. The mother acts as some form of a filter that with the fish and embryos, they're getting a full dose and it is just devastating them. But see, we're now being uh, tranny fish phobic because we're trying to be mean to the sexual preference of the fish. No, the fish is mutated. The fish is dying. But now that people have been changed, they want to hold on to this chemical identity and they want to go all the way with more chemicals to become the woman, to become the man. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just a, a really sick scientific program that Huxley uh, you know, wrote a fiction book about but later admitted. How crazy is it that his brother ran the UN UNESCO program, was the uh, top eugenicist in the world and the founder of transhumanism, set our current course. His brother wrote a book about it and then admitted in his other book, Brave New World Revisited, that it was an actual plan. So, so, so we have this, this, this mountain of a literary famous person telling us this isn't fiction. And we're here living now deeply into this as our whole world is being hijacked by these mad scientists. And the average trendy doesn't care and, and, and wants to eat chemicals that won't just change their sexuality. And, and, you know, bare minimum, make them metrosexual. But they want the cancer, I guess. They want to be sterile. Because I hear them. I see their comments. They go, good, I don't want to have kids. I'm glad they're sterilizing me. Humanity sucks anyways. I mean, it's this give up attitude that is just insane. Right. Well, even in 2011, Harvard School of Health published a study in the Journal of Pediatrics and found that Pregnant mothers' exposure to BPA and other endocrine-disrupting uh, chemicals correlated with hyperactivity, anxiety, aggression, depression, ADD, and ADHD for the child. So, again, you know, you have to look at all these conditions as being caused by some form of chemical coming into the body that's disrupting your normal brain activity. Sure. Well, I used to be against uh, folks here and people that did testosterone replacement, uh, but the more I research it and everything... The, and, and doctors are in the news admitting that men's testosterone, by the time they're 40, is half on average what it used to be. There is a war on the literal male chemical. You know, the scary part about it is, I mean, the, the, there's a good news to it because there's a lot of things we can do to avoid these things and, and clean our body to prevent this thing from happening. But the scary thing is, the, the done by design, this really will affect you for four generations. This changes your genetic code. It literally changes your, the way your DNA is and can affect you. And the studies have done, been done on mice at University of Virginia School of Medicine, actually, that showed that at four generations later, these mice were still affected. So we're starting to get into these generational cycles, and it's sad to think that you know, the next four generations can be affected by all these chemicals. And it's not like we're slowing down and eliminating the chemicals. They're just, it's getting worse. And there's more glyphosate and more of these chemicals being sprayed and put in all of our food supply, the water, and everything else. I want to go to phone calls and keep you a little bit in the next hour. And then we've got uh, a, a major media uh, owner coming on. To, to talk about the war on free speech and the war globally on internet freedom that we find in the TPP. Uh, but before we do that, I didn't plug anything last hour. Uh, I'm skipping a ton of network breaks. I'm so obnoxious. Um, we fund ourselves with high-quality water filtration systems to cut out the fluoride and the, the uh, garbage, the glyphosates, uh, with the ProPure G2 systems that blow away the competition at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, we have gotten in the T-shirts. Uh, that we have had made that say save America with an upside down flag and then it has the U.S. code that when the country is in dire straits you are to fly the flag upside down it's a great conversation starter on the back it says our republic is in distress ask me why infowars.com purchasing the patriot apparel helps fund the operation um, we are running out of the current stock of survival shield x2 Hopefully, we'll just be out a month or so. Dr. Group has a small amount left at his major uh, factory laboratory that's been produced. He does have more of the crystals that are mined from between seven and 12,000 feet. That supply is running low. He'll have to procure more. We ended up finding this source two years ago, the cleanest ever, ever sold, ever used that 
we've been able to find. I mean, it's a game changer. The other stuff comes from kelp sources, which just isn't as strong or pure. I mean, it's a lot better than not having iodine. You'll die without it. Uh, but that's why this is so much more palatable. It's why the effect is so much stronger. There was a guy playing the accordion at an Italian food restaurant I was at last night. And he ran over and was a listener. And he said, listen, I took that stuff and I had to cut my dose in half. I totally detoxed, lost a bunch of weight, got healthier, broke out everywhere. All these toxins came out. I've had so much more energy. But boy, it's good you tell people, look out. Yeah, consult a physician. Okay, or consult a nutritionist or whatever. This is the most powerful iodine out there. Other stuff they sell at the store will eat holes in your guts. You know, stuff to put on topically. Uh, so, so again, consult your physician. But this is a major game changer. That's why I've stockpiled it. And I realize as we're running out of it, we were having trouble getting another super clean source. And that's how we ended up finding this two years ago. And so, Dr. Group, I know you want to get into Fukushima separately. Uh, and the news article right here, leaked Fukushima containers uh, could lead to hydrogen explosions, RT. There's 333 of the containers. Each one could be as big as one of the other meltdowns. But I don't really take this just because of background radiation increasing or isotopes or whatever. I take it because I understand my glands will get filled with bad halogens, become toxic and fail like the thyroid, and they don't fill it with good halogen. And when I forget, and that's iodine, to take my iodine every day, I feel it. I mean, it gives me a bigger boost than a cup of coffee. And I always remember hearing this from the hippies. Like I said, 20-something years ago, I'd go to Barton Springs and see hippies, and I'd say, what's that in that jug or that bottle? And they'd say, it's iodine. They'd be just, you know, super good shape, some like 70-year-old guy looking like he was 40. And I'd be like, and then they'd go, go yeah, hippie, whatever. Uh, but I remember, I mean, this is something the hippies have always known. What is it about iodine? What does it do? And uh, I sure hope we can continue to get these deep earth crystal uh, sources, uh, Dr. Group. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you, you drill from deep down in the earth, you know, you might have a, a time where, just like oil drilling, where it might dry up a little bit and you need to find some more. But uh, another thing that I think is going on, and this is proven by what just happened a few days ago at Fukushima when um, they're saying that it's, Fukushima is leaking again now and it's the worst ever, the readings in the port in Fukushima uh, I think that countries are now secretly trying to stock up on a lot of iodine. It's, you know, iodine contamination, iodine-131 is being found now in the rain and milk supplies and the food supplies. But like you said, it's not only in the radioactive iodine. And, and another thing actually that happens is as that iodine is leaking into the Atlantic Ocean, it also mixes with salt water. And when you mix iodine with salt, it, it creates iodides. And it can even cr produce nanoparticles of weird substances that can even be gassed off and go up into the atmosphere for a while. But my research with iodine is that everybody pretty much needs it. We're all deficient in iodine because there's really not any sources of iodine left. And guess what? We've been talking about uh, estrogen uh, dominance and endocrine disrupting chemicals. Well, estrogen actually inhibits the absorption of iodine. So you, you might actually link that and say, is there a conspiracy behind the endocrine disrupting chemicals knowing that you're not going to be able to get iodine, uh, the absorption of iodine if you have those chemicals in, which would mean soy or anything else. Now, the government sets an RDA of 150 micrograms a day, but they set that because that was the amount that would prevent a goiter. But they know that everybody needs much more iodine in their system, even up to, you know, what I take, sometimes even up to 20 milligrams a day, which is 20,000 micrograms. I agree with you. Everybody needs to consult with their healthcare practitioner. But if you look around, we're seeing a massive increase in breast cancer, fibrocystic breast disease. We're talking about any type of glandular, prostate gland, all these things are affected by iodine being iodine deficient. The thyroid needs about 6,000 micrograms, three to 6,000 micrograms every single day just for normal functioning. So if, you, if you're not sweating, you, you might be deficient in iodine. If you have cold hands and feet, if your skin is dry, you have insomnia, hair loss, 
mental illness, again, linked to iodine deficiency, depression, anxiety, low immune system, weight gain. You know, pregnancy and miscarriages are being linked to iodine deficiency. Fibromyalgia is, is a deficiency. Iodine is a powerful antimicrobial. It was, studies have been done on iodine, which was suspended in a solution and it inactivated viruses at dilutions of like one in one million. So iodine is just something that I feel every person, they've done studies on pregnant mothers and found out that they're deficient in iodine, something that I, I use, my kids take, and something that I feel is necessary because it's not just us saying that everybody's iodine deficient. The World Health Organization's Department of Nutrition and Health and Development came out and said that iodine deficiency is a public health problem in 54 countries. Um, Elemental iodine is the is what the iodine is in its natural state, and that's what it is deep in the earth. And that consists of two iodine atoms that are bonded together, and that is a highly corrosive and toxic compound because it's part of the halogens, which is fluoride and bromine and chlorine and iodine. And I don't want to confuse people. Uh, <clears throat> explain to them, we're saying iodine is a good halogen. The problem is when it binds with radiation then it's a bad one. That's why you need the good one so that there's no room for the bad one to come in. Well, the iodine in its raw state can be very corrosive. And that's even though we're taking the, the best raw state, it still has to go through a seven step process to be detoxified. Explain that to people, because I was listening to the hippies finally before I even knew you. And I started taking iodine here and there, but it would give me a stomach ache, uh, you name it. Um, the stuff they sell at the store will basically kill you. They admit that. So, so how is this so different and how is it palatable? Okay, so when iodine comes out of the ground, it's, it's iodine. There's two iodine molecules in its natural state. So it's just two iodine atoms bonded together. So what they did a long time ago was create, they found that they could stabilize it. And you show the pictures of when it's smoking because iodine will evaporate or it'll uh, outgas into the air when, when it comes in contact with oxygen. So what they figured a way to do was to make an iodide. And that's what you see all the military and the country stocking up on is potassium iodide. And what that is, is the ion state of iodine. And that's produced by bonding the iodine to another element. In, in this case, it would be potassium. This form of iodine, it can be ingested and it, it can be applied to the skin, but it's hard to break down in the body. So what we did is, is developed a proprietary technology to where we take the iodine crystals out of the ground and those have to go through a process to become 99.99% pure. Once we get the 99.99% pure iodine crystals, we create a nascent or an atomic-based iodine that contains a single iodine atom. So instead of something being bonded and there's two and that has to be broken in the body, the nascent, the Survival Shield X2, has a iodine atom, which is an active atom, and it's easy for your body to absorb. And that's why and the stuff right that you away. developed using the Russian technology in your own research turns electric blue, the true color of real iodine, not red like all the others, is because I guess they're bound. Yours is in the single form. Right. Ours is reactive right away. It's an atomic form. It's a single bonded iodine it's exactly what the body needs to use. So we shouldn't call this nascent iodine. We should call it atomic iodine. Well, it's pretty much the same thing. So you could, I mean, some people say nascent, some people say atomic. It just means as an active, as an active electron on its outer shell. Okay, why when I first started taking iodine did it make all this stuff come out of my pores? Well, iodine will fight for the receptor sites in the thyroid gland and, and everywhere else in the body and the fat cells, especially where toxins are uh, kept. And iodine's been proven to immobilize chemicals and toxins and heavy metals from the tissues, and then they go back into your system so you can eliminate them properly. So that's why, so, on average, two to three weeks after taking it, you'll feel like crap, and then stuff will start coming out of you. You're detoxing. It just depends on each individual, but it depends on how much, you know, fluoride they have in their body, the chlorine, bromine, other chemicals, heavy metals, uh, lead, actually, mercury. Uh, it'll just, it'll start pushing that stuff out and then getting into the tissue where 
you needed the most. Because, I mean, I got energy right away, and I had energy while I felt bad. It just kind of felt like a hangover for a week. And then after that, it was like when you've been carrying, say, your 7-year-old on your shoulders up a hill, and you take them off, and it feels like you're flying, you know? Walking feels so easy. That's what... It felt like I was 18 again after I went through that detox. It was just amazing. Well, because it's balancing your hormones out, too, because it displaces some of those endocrine-disrupting chemicals. And iodine is just an amazing substance. Once your thyroid gland starts to reactivate again and starts to become, and your pineal gland starts to decalcify and your hormones start functioning, usually when you have hormone disruption, that's when all your symptoms start to happen. Your low energy, your fatigue, your mental conditions, your weight gain around your, uh, around your stomach and your buttocks area, your insomnia, your skin issues. You know, if you have any dry skin, psoriasis, eczema, cysts in your body, uh, depression, anxiety, miscarriages in women. I mean, all those things are going to be, I mean, there's, there's a whole slew of sim symptoms that we can link to. And if folks don't want to get Survival Shield X2, original Survival Shield, they can go do research and, 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 and find good uh, salts that do have good iodine in them, correct? Well, you can get a Himalayan crystal salt, and that's going to have some good iodine in it. But again, it's probably going to be bonded to a sodium or a potassium. There's no, there's no form of iodine like the X2 out there, and it's easy to take. You're probably, even in the salts, not going to get enough. But still, it's better, be it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. But you got to remember, think of all the chemicals that you're bringing into your body. How many people out there have mercury amalgam fillings? They're constantly getting mercury gas leaking into their brain and their bloodstream. All the chemicals sure, that are Sure, let me ask you this. we go to break their... and then come back and take calls. Because we got uh, Dave as a vet has a question about his meds. Robert wants to talk about mercury and dental fillings you just mentioned. I'm going to push our next guest back. I want to interview him, but till about 15 after, I'll do the whole rest of the hour with our next guest on media. Very important interview coming up. Uh, but we're one minute from break here. I just wanted to get into the fact that you don't want to openly say this on air, but you were talking to some researchers and folks who were trying to test this. But the way you use organic palm glycerin uh, just as a different medium than alcohol what what's happening with the iodine going into that you think that might be making it even more bioavailable or, or, or what's happening well uh with our research we were looking for a natural non-toxic source to be able to stabilize the iodine in that state all the research before has been done with alcohol but we now know that alcohol in itself is an endocrine disrupting chemical so if alcohol is an endocrine disrupting chemical and iodine is supposed to take the endocrine disrupting chemicals out of the body then it's kind of you know it's kind of one of those you know buffering situations so stay we there stay there we'll be back in 70 seconds it's important third hour folks ton of news as well Thank future of the internet future of free speech what about the attack on free speech, the uh, TPP, you name it. We're going to go to 15 after with Dr. Group to take your calls. I appreciate you holding. Dave in Missouri, you have a question. Go ahead. Welcome, Dave from Missouri. Go ahead. You're on the air. Okay, that caller's gone. Let's talk to Robert in Nevada. You're on the air. Go ahead, Robert. Hey, Alex. Uh, I'm 14 years old. I've been watching for a while. Um, when I was... Uh Seven years old, I got fillings and uh, with mercury in them. And after that, I was diagnosed with OCD. So I was just curious as if that's linked to any uh, kind of mental disorders. Well, I know dentists have a record, uh, you know, uh, rate of dying early uh, of, of all physicians, some of the worst. And, and a lot of evidence shows it's because they're breathing uh, the amalgams as they drill them out. Uh, but that's, that's one theory. I mean, we know m mercury and lead is super bad, uh, especially mercury, uh, Dr. Group. No, you're absolutely right. Like what you were talking about with the Mad Hatter and, and mercury has, especially when it combines with aluminum in the brain, it can create violent reactions. So I would definitely say that that would be something I would look at and mercury is extremely damaging. So my recommendation would be to find a biological dentist somewhere in your area that can safely remove the mercury amalgam fillings and replace them with maybe a non-toxic porcelain or something like that. Just make sure that he uses uh, the proper uh, dental dams, and some of them use ozone. You might want to look for one that does that to neutralize any of the gases the mercury uh, releases. 
as they remove them. Some people have gone down to Mexico that we've talked to to get their mercury amalgams removed and ended up paralyzed from the waist down because when they're removing the mercury amalgams, if you swallow a big chunk or too much of the gas is released, it can cause such damaging neurological damage that can even paralyze you. Unbelievable. Uh, reality is just so much stranger than fiction. Mercury and fillings, I mean, it's like mercury in the vaccines. It's insanity. Anything else, Robert? Uh, that's all, but uh, thank you very much for taking my call. Thank you, sir, for calling. Christina in Louisiana, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, oh, Christian, sir. I'm uh, sorry. Christian. I'm going to. Sir, go ahead. Oh, no, it's, it's all right. No problem. Uh, well, two, two questions. You, you mentioned mercury and vaccines. That's not exactly what I called about, but I, I found myself yesterday having a, a more intense discussion with a good friend of mine than I expected to have. He came over about something else, and uh, kind of out of the blue, he asked me about the whooping cough vaccine. And, uh, you know, my wife actually had a miscarriage recently, and it, it reminded me with the iodine. She didn't like the taste of the X2. I'm going to try the original survival seed. She preferred the taste of that. That's a, that's kind of a completely separate issue. But he mentioned the whooping cough, and I can tell, and this is the whole thing, where his his concern for me and his concern for my well-being, ultimately for our future child's well-being, well, uh, well that comes off as, you know, somehow if I am against the vaccine, you know, well, then how about my, is my, wife, how about my wife? You know, she's the better half. What does she say about it? So you, you can't just say, well, you're, you know, I'm, I'm against vaccines or even I'm against mercury in vaccines. You almost have to go step by step through some, some phenomenological explanation of what the child goes through. Cause I've had eyewitness uh, reports. I've spoken to a father who told me point blank. He watched the light go out in his child's eyes. But, 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 and I said, well, it can be reversed. They're trying to be optimistic. And he says, well, yeah, but the, my wife, she doesn't think we should do that, or she thinks it was God's will, or he didn't really say, I think, oh, I, I kind of threw that No, out it's there. modern human sacrifice. Look, there's no reason to take a hepatitis shot for a child. They're extremely dangerous. The, the government quietly pays off vaccine-damaged kids. It's a huge cover-up. Uh, and so we're going to come back and get Dr. Group's breakdown on that and take a few final calls uh, straight ahead. But yes, they are pushing vaccines now on pregnant women. They know what they're doing, but they can't admit they're wrong. Hayden Hewitt, the founder of LiveLeak.com that reaches billions of live streams a year, hundreds of millions of people, has really helped us uh, get the word out and opened up our streams to reach millions of people uh, at Bilderberg coverage and other events. One time we had over 2 million people on the line. At one time, we had 3 million people. Uh, watch over the next two days. And that's something that definitely scares the establishment. He's going to be joining us here in about 10 minutes talking about attacks on the First Amendment, not just here in the U.S., but free speech overseas, how the TPP uh, attacks free speech according to the WikiLeaks documents, uh, and more. But I want to try to get to four or five of these calls, Felicia, Mike, uh, Jim, uh, Tim, and others before Dr. Group has to leave. But the last caller was just desperate, talking about having a child and the doctor trying to bully him to, to give vaccines and then trying to go to his wife to get her to do it. Uh, it's just crazy how they're pushing the vaccine so aggressively right now. Yeah, and flu shots. Uh, flu shots and vaccines. I mean, you can get them in a grocery store now and get 10% off your total bill. It's it's, it's one of those controversial subjects where you just have to do your own research. I mean, I tell people, don't believe me. Go type in vaccine dangers in Google and you'll find plenty of information. The MMR I mean, shot says it can give you type two type 1 diabetes. Well, they can give you t they can give you a lot more than that. I mean, all vaccines and flu shots. If you look at all the different ingredients inside of them, look, just go in and type in vaccine ingredients and take each one of them and you'll see that they change your DNA, RNA, they alter your, your mental ability, they call, can cause cancer, they can cause all different types of symptoms, mental retardation. And the they're being manufactured and by these big evil pharmaceutical companies that, I mean, Bayer makes vaccines. They got caught for over a decade sending out uh, factor eight for hemophiliacs that they knew had HIV and hepatitis in it. It was a death sentence.
It's exactly opposite of your immune system. Your immune system, what you're designed with in your body, your self-healing mechanism is designed to do the best work at fighting viruses, bacteria, keeping your body strong and healthy. What they do, a vaccine is nothing more than a shot to kill your own not natural system or to reduce your own immune system and your immune system has to work extra hard because it has to fight all the chemicals and toxins that are in the vaccine or the flu shot to begin with. So, I mean, if you dig deep enough, you can even see that they list the dangers uh, on the the CDC's website, the FDA, uh, the pharmaceutical the manufacturers of the but vaccines, they lie to the, the public, inserts. But then I mean, they lie right to the there. public and say safe and effective. Yeah, it's right there in plain sight. You just have to stop. And say, wait a second, why am I going to? I mean, that's the main situation that we're dealing with now with food, beverages, water, exposure to any of these things is people don't just say, wait, let me see what's in this beverage before I drink it. Let me see what's in this food before I eat it. Let me research what's in this vaccine or flu shot before I stick it in my body. That's right. All right. I want to go through these calls. Mike in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, I was thinking of an idea for a product that would help maybe come off Oxycontins or pain medicine. Uh, I know a lot of people that struggle with it, I myself, and uh, I've been trying for a really long time, and I know everything that I've read says to ease off of it, but by the time you ease off of it and you the medicine starts to work again and then you just take more, uh, I, I don't know if Dr. Group could suggest a regimen to come off of them. Boy, this is a big question, the age-old thing of how to get off opiates. Uh, whoever figures that out is going to you know, win the Nobel Prize. Well, actually, get the Nobel Prize for committing evil now, so I guess you wouldn't. You'd probably get assassinated. Uh, but I know there are things you can do with supplements. There are herbs and things I know that, the, that they've proven can help block some of the addiction and that even Big Pharma is trying to patent some of that now. Uh, Dr. Group, what would you do to get off, uh, say, a hillbilly heroin, uh, uh, Oxycontin? Well, we've actually had a lot of good success with that, and it all stems back to cleansing the body, starting with intestinal cleansing with oxy powder and then moving on to liver and gallbladder cleansing because you have to remember those pain medications will cause you to become constipated. And once you yeah, clean why the do opiates do that? Because I've never really taken them except when I had a broken leg or whatever. But I always hear about heroin heads and people like don't go to the bathroom but every two weeks. Well, because it alters the neurological contractions or the normal contractions of the muscles that surround the intestinal lining, it kind of numbs the nerves. That's why they're pain medications because they numb the nerves so you can't feel the pain. Well, you have tiny thousands and millions and millions of these little nerve endings all the way down through your intestinal lining. So at, because you're taking an opiate, because you're taking medications, most likely the majority of people that are taking pain medications or any medications are not eating healthy. These things numb the uh, nerves. They leak through the intestinal lining through leaky gut syndrome, and then you become constipated because you're not able... To create that normal peristaltic movement in the bowel. What and a nightmare drug. Yes, but you can eventually get off of those. One of the things, vitamin D, uh, like the winter sun, it's amazing what that does for healing joint. And I don't know why you're in pain to begin with, but uh, some of the newest research that's come out on 20,000 IUs of vitamin D. There was a doctor, a research scientist that wrote a book called The Miraculous Healing Benefits of D3 actually found that high doses of D3 can help heal all of those injuries. Well, sure, for that folks that don't know, because I did my own research, isn't D3 a, mass, a master base hormone? I mean, it's basically a hormone, and that you have to have it to produce and manufacture your hormones, and that's the same thing for basically uh, B12, right? Yes. Actually, D3 is a hormone, and I, I really didn't think it was that necessary. I figured we were getting enough in the sun. But as our research continued, I realized that uh, there was also a conspiracy or an attack on blocking the UVB rays with all the chemtrails, and that pretty much we're all deficient or not getting enough D in the body as well. But that led me to looking at 
you know, there's thousands upon thousands of studies on the effects of D, and I, that's another thing I think everybody is deficient in and everybody needs. So I would highly recommend if anyone's on prescription medications, whether it's pain medications or whatever, there are solutions. And one thing with opiates is you have to get off of gluten when you're uh, slowly through time, it's called time contingent detoxification. You don't want to cold turkey it. You want to slowly start reducing it, reducing it, reducing it over a period of wow, time. Wow, this is really important. I well, want to have you on for a whole show about gluten because even in mainline literature, they admit now that it mimics opiates. That's a whole other subject. How is grain mimicking poppy seeds? It's just the they're just finding new things about it all the time. I mean, I, I can't remember the chemical name of it, but yeah, I was just not too long ago reading some information that gluten actually does have an opiate like compound in it. And think of and that's what makes bread so addictive. That's why that's it makes why, you so calm and feel so good when you eat a big, you exactly, know, loaf of bread at the steakhouse. Exactly, exactly. And it also you also go through withdrawals when you get off of it. They, it makes you crave it again, so you get more and more of it. So that's something that needs to be... It, amazing. We've got to go in a few minutes because our, our next guest is coming up. Dr. Rupp, I appreciate all your time. Let's move quickly now to Felicia uh, in Oregon. And again, they've got the call thing way back, so I can barely read. I'm not complaining. It's just that's why I'm butchering the names. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi. About a year ago, um, after starting uh, the X2, I developed symptoms that almost uh, started, you know, resulted in surgery. But in it ended up, I had Hashimoto's, and I was told that the iodine is what made that condition flare, the, you know, the autoimmune response to start. And I wanted to know what your opinion was and if I could resume taking iodine, and if not, how can I keep that part of my system straight? Well, uh, I don't know, you know too much about your history and everything, but I have not heard, and, and I also refer to uh, Dr. Brownstein's research on Hashimoto's hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, and I haven't had a case, I don't think Dr. Brownstein has either, of iodine, a good source of iodine ever causing a thyroid condition that would require any type of surgery or anything like that. So I don't know how much you were taking. Uh, as a matter of fact, just the opposite. We've seen uh, people, what happens, you might, it really takes about six months is what we've seen to regulate out the thyroid because what happens is the bromine starts releasing and the, the other halogens which can alter different types of thyroid i was about to say if it, if it makes your body push out all the toxins that have built up and we know that the, 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 it hits women harder then that could have been the response kind of like cleaning a filter out i mean if you ever right. clean the filter in your fish tank you do it right. wrong it dumps all the crap into the fish tank and, and uh, so i mean that's why i've said that people should consult their physician before using this stuff because you got all these bad halogens in there and you're now going to be messing with that you know who knows what happens is when you start taking it, you might have hypothyroid, you might have hyper, you might have Hashimoto's for a period of time, and that's just your thyroid getting rid of anything. The problem is that the doctors, when they do thyroid panels or when they do, most doctors never test for iodine anyway, but even the ones that do, they don't test for bromine. So you get false positive results. And so in order to rebalance the thyroid... Exactly. You, you they might... don't test for the bad halogens. They'll blame iodine because you've got so much yes. of the other stuff in you. I read about that. So probably because, again, that's, you... that's medical doctors that are always... And, of course, Brownstein is a medical doctor, but uh, who just don't understand it. So probably at that one point in time, you went in to have your thyroid checked or something. I don't know what happened. And Hashimoto's is nothing more than a roller coaster of your thyroid going up and down, which is completely normal in, in a lot of times with people starting on iodine. So they they might have, you know, misdiagnosed you or, or might have said, you know... Ma'am, I appreciate your call. Too. We're out of time, but that's a really important question because I'll be in restaurants, I'll be at church, I'll be just everywhere for years, and I see women talking about their thyroids, young, old. I see women everywhere where, where, who aren't fat but have a swollen goiter like we had uh, in the 20s and 30s when we didn't have iodine and the salt. Uh, of course, they've taken it out again. Why is it hitting women? And, of course, they admit that in the news, that women are more heavily hit uh, than others by thyroid problems. Why is there an epidemic of that? 
Well, women have uh, a larger thyroid gland anyway, and uh, iodine, re iodine really likes to deposit itself in the reproductive areas. And women have breasts, which are, you know, a lot more surface area than guys. And so iodine likes to accumulate in there. Women have their menstrual cycles, which are changes in their hormonal patterns. And if they don't have enough iodine, they can have, you know, harder symptoms of PMS, endometriosis, any of the reproductive, women just have a tendency to have more reproductive problems than men. They have ovaries, they have eggs, they have a whole cycle that goes on all the time. So it real iodine deficiency really affects women a lot more than it does men. Well, again, everybody's body is different. Is it possible? Because people can be uh, allergic to, you know, cabbage. They can be allergic to anything. Is it possible that, that's why I always say check with a physician, that some people could be allergic uh, to pure iodine? Because, I mean, I know you'll die without it, but... So so I don't think if you have a receptor on every single cell in your body for a substance that you could ever be allergic to it. What happens is sometimes the bowel is in such bad shape that they might be taken with something else or something else might be inside the bowel at the time that might cause a reaction or inflammation. But as far as looking at a monotomic or looking at a detoxified type of iodine and knowing that you have every single cell in your body has an iodine receptor, to me, it would be absolutely impossible the way that God designed it for you to be have an allergy to iodine in its detoxified form. All right, we've got to have you back up sooner to just take a full hour of calls because we've got Jim wants to talk about fibromyalgia that's exploding. David was, wants to talk about his medications. Tim wants to talk about heart problems. Sean was, uh, is a pharmacist. Uh, wants to talk to Dr. Group on a health issue. Joey wants to talk about winter sun, vitamin D question. But I'm going to, even though we got our next guest, I'm pushing him back. I apologize. We'll go to Sean and, and then to have a final question because Sean's a pharmacist. I want to hear what Sean has to say from Canada. Sean, you're on the air with Dr. Group. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a first-time caller and uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity to finally talk with you, Alex. Um, I've actually had experience working both in Canada and the U.S. And I uh, just wanted to ask Dr. Group about his opinion on health care in Canada versus the U.S. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it in Canada, but here in the U.S., I've worked here in the U.S., and the prices are just astronomical. Um, it's not really a free market. Um, and I wanted to know what you thought about that because we're talking about drugs that are 30 or 40 years old that are marked up 50 to maybe like a thousand percent. Sure, I thought the available. U.S. was the worst about gouging for drugs. You're saying Canada's worst? No, actually, no, no, I'm not, sir. What I'm saying is that it's like a drug such as maybe Dr. Group can comment on this, but I mean, a drug such as Declofenac, which is uh, basically a topical anti inflammatory. I could go to Canada to one of my buddies' pharmacies and buy it for about a hundred bucks. But when I was working here in the U.S., dispensing it in the drive-through to a patient on workers' compensation, I mean, the drug was more than fourteen hundred dollars. Now that's a whole other issue. Absolutely, that's a whole other issue. Why does the U.S. have the highest drug cost in the world, Doctor Group? That's a good way to end it. Thank you, Sean. Well, in short, that we don't technically have a health care system here or we don't have a health care system in Canada or anywhere where there's pharmaceuticals. We have a death or a disease management care system. And until they realize that we need to address the root cause of disease and the root cause of mental illness, it's going to stay that way. It's, the reason why the drugs are so expensive is because it's all a money game. It's all about how much money they can make, and the insurance companies are tied in with the pharmaceutical companies. And not only that, they're tied in with the big organizations like Susan B. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation, American Cancer Society, and all the 501c corporations that people donate money to. So they take money from you every single way they can and make you feel bad and make you think that sure. they're going to come up with a cure, but they never will. All right, Dr. Group, globalhealingcenter.com. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you.